So the safety cube dependency uh, wording, I found that interesting. That's something I wanted to kind of delve into a bit more. So I'm gonna take this off in my own direction here and then I'll bring it back to what Christian was asking. Do we to become, well, the way where I wanna take this is, do we become dependent on safety cues? And if we do, so what? They're safety cues, right? Like, what does it matter? And I guess where it matters is, is if it's a safety cue and that other person is your safety cue, then we might be using them for our own benefit? Question mark? Kind of benefit? Pseudo benefit? So we might be utilizing someone. We might, might be using them as a tool. And that does not go along with being in your safe and social state, in my opinion. If you're in your safe and social state, I don't think you're actually going to be utilizing somebody else as a tool so that you can leave the house. That's going to come from desperation, of course. That's going to come from wanting, needing to minimize the amount of pain you're in. That's going to come from needing to be functional. Absolutely. But at some point, that may be done at somebody else's expense. And I can see that being a problem. So if that dysregulated person is not considerate, they, and that's just one scenario, but there could easily be scenarios where that person becomes manipulative of another person in order to feel what seems like safety or relief or protection. That could easily become a problem at that point. But I wouldn't really call that a safety cue. To me, that is a diminishing of defensive energy, which is something but I wouldn't call it a safety cue. I mentioned earlier, I like the smell of oranges. Well, how about that? Could I become dependent on the smell of an orange in order to self-regulate, to climb my, the top of my polyvagal ladder and feel safety? And if so, so what? Who cares? And I, I could see, you know, maybe if it becomes like an addiction or something like that, maybe if that's interfering with my basic functioning, at that point it becomes a problem, sure. Like if I'm in a therapy session and I have to like leave and go sniff an orange in order to come back into the therapy room and be effective. Yeah, I I can see that being a problem. Sure. But what if we're just using safety cues to self-regulate? Isn't that kind of the whole point of uh, safety cues, uh, at least self-regulative safety cues, the ones that we kind of have some control over? Those, you know, things that anchor us in our safety system. That's, that's the point, right? Is, is to feel safety. So, so what? Like, what else would you do besides utilizing some sort of safety cue or safety anchor? What else would you be utilizing in order to get to your safe and social state? These external cues are for our senses. So the smell of an orange that I utilize my sense of smell in order to ground myself. The, the a visual of Uh, Nature, a lot of times in therapy, I'll have a screen with a picture of nature in it, uh, just that I find on YouTube. And and that seems to be, that helps ground people. So it's a safety cue for my clients, yeah. And they they use their senses in order to, to, in order to climb the top of the ladder to safety. That's self-regulation, right? Isn't that a good thing? Or we could even use like top-down internal cues, like telling us, telling ourselves that we're, hey, we're amazing. We can handle whatever situation is, it is, or uh, doing some sort of cognitive reframe. So we can do top-down cues to regulate as well. And that's kind of a safety cue. I don't, I don't personally see an issue with that. Now, if we do these things, is that becoming dependent upon it? I don't necessarily think it is. The issue for me is, are we building our self-regulation or not? If we do these things, if we turn to these things, if we have a menu of options but that brings us to safety and we utilize what's on our menu, which I think is a really good idea, is it building our self-regulation or not? Are we building up our independence, our ability to self-regulate or not? Are we actually building up our distress tolerance? We all need safety cues. This is very normal. We're all going to utilize these external and internal safety cues. That's, that's not an issue. 
but are you actually building up your capacity to tolerate more distress and to self-regulate? That's, that's what it comes down to. And the way you might measure this or something you could ask yourself or think about when you think about your clients for my therapies, it's an issue of, is it, it might be an issue of, I need to feel better versus my autonomic nervous system needs more regulation. I think there's a different flavor in those two statements. I need to feel better. My autonomic nervous system needs more regulation. I need to feel better. That can easily turn into addiction or relief seeking or protection seeking. That can turn into those situations where your basic functioning is at risk or you're eventually unwittingly even manipulating somebody else as a tool for your own feelings of protection. This is, I, I compare this to like a medicinal kind of mindset that we are reliant on a safety cue as a dose of medicine, or we are reliant upon experts to tell us what to do to feel better, to make the feelings go away. I need to feel better. Make this stop. Make this go away. And we know from polyvagal theory that story follows state. So that means that the thoughts in our mind follow the state that we are in, in our autonomic nervous system. And that I need to feel better, that can have a very panicky kind of flavor. I think that could probably fall into any of the defensive states on the polyvagal ladder. But my mind goes to like a more of a panicky, like I need to make this go away. I need to make this stop. Now, if we're utilizing safety cues at, at, at that point, not necessarily bad, but I could see that becoming a dependence. But at that point, it's used more as a coping skill, maybe. But it doesn't sound like genuine self-regulation building. Compared to my autonomic nervous system needs more regulation, That to me, it has more of an element of mindfulness, like you're aware of the somatic piece of yourself, part of yourself. Not that it's different, but uh, as distinct from your conscious awareness. You're able to witness your somatic needs. You're able to notice that your thinking self may be out of misalignment with your somatic self and that these things need to align. Come back to baseline, come back to the present moment. So my autonomic nervous system needs more regulation. I think it's more of just like an, it's an accurate description of what's happening rather than I need to make this stop, make it stop. Uh, but the problem, the trick here is that you kind of have to have some safety activated already in order to have that level of mindfulness. So that's kind of the catch there. So this, again, brings me back to what I asked before, which is, are we building self-regulation or not? Safety cues are not an antidote to make def defensive feelings go away. That's not what it's about. That's just maybe coping at best. That's just dealing with the moment and getting through the moment. And that's not bad. I'm not knocking people for that at all. You do what you got to do to get to the moment. But we want to build the capacity to self-regulate, ideally. So we build safety. We, we build it. It's not something we turn on by smelling an orange. I mean, it is in that moment. can be grounding. But does that help you to build self-regulation overall? We build safety. We don't just turn it on. Building Safety Anchor is my course that's designed to build safety over time. I do have a 30-day option and a self-paced option. But the, the, the idea here is to identify what brings you to safety and not just identify what brings you there, but to incorporate it incorporate it more into your system M mindfully, especially mindfully during the course of building safety anchors. I help you to identify and mindfully practice what brings you to safety. That is absolutely essential for you, for therapy clients in order to build safety. So building safety anchors helps you identify different methods, different ways to bring yourself to safety, but also how to mindfully experience them and build that capacity to actually stay in your safety state 
And then over time, the need decreases in general, I think, to do something like smelling an orange or being with someone to get out of the house. The need for that should decrease over time. And BSA is not supposed to be a replacement for therapy, but it can help to reduce defensive feelings by increasing feelings of safety. And if you can practice this every day, uh, or just maybe even, even weekly, just some, if you just practice it, the need to do a grounding skill should decrease over time. 